As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been sitting here waiting for you. And today we're going to wrap up Jude verse 19. And next week, we're going to begin with Jude verse 20, which talks about praying in the Holy Ghost, building up our most holy faith. It's going to be so encouraging. But today is the last day this week. We're offering you my new series called Mockers in the Last Day. And this week, we've been looking at what Jude had to say about the arising of mockers in the church in the last days. Order this series today. It's the last day that we're offering it this week, and it comes with a study guide. And today is the last day this week we're offering my book called Last Days Survival Guide, the Forward by Perry Stone. The subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. But reach for your Bible. And today we're going to return to the book of Jude, and today is going to be packed from the beginning all the way to the end. And as you turn in your Bibles to the book of Jude, remember that we're waiting to hear from you so we can pray with you. If you'll give us a call or send us your email, the moment we hear from you, we're going to release our faith for Jesus to do something great in your life, and he really will. We'll ask, according to Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, and I'll show you great and mighty things. And together with you, we'll call out to God in faith. And God will answer and show you great and mighty things. And thank you for all your comments in response to the programs this week. Every time you write to me, it means so much to me. But reach for your Bibles. And today we're going to return to the book of Jude. And we're going to begin today by reading the RIV of verse 17. And the RIV of Jude 17 says, But beloved, I call you that, because it's the only word I know to express how deeply I love and cherish you. Always remember, never forget, and continually call to remembrance the words which were spoken earlier and prophetically by the apostles and personal representatives of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then in verse 18, the King James Version says, How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Let's review verse 18 just for a moment. The two words, how that, are translation of the Greek word hoti, which here points to something specific and very, very important. He said, he'll hear me out. This is what they told you. He says, how that they told you. The word told in Greek is the word elegon, which means they told you and told you and told you. They were saying it and saying it, which lets us know this was a theme that was repeated very often by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what were they saying and saying? They told you that there should be mockers in the last times. The word mockers, the Greek word impiktes from impaizo, and listen to what it means. The word impaizo was often used for playing a game with children or amusing a crowd by impersonating someone in a silly and exaggerated way. This word could be used to depict a game of charades. When someone intended to comically portray someone else or even to make fun of, to ridicule, or to mock someone. And again, it meant to impersonate someone in a silly and exaggerated way. So these are mockers. These are scoffers who are making fun of others. And according to Jude, they're going to appear in the last time. The word last is a translation of the Greek word eschatos. And the word eschatos points to the ultimate end of a thing, the very, very, very end, the extreme end. And it was used in classical Greek to describe the very ends of the earth, and it was used as a nautical term to describe the very last port. If you sail to this port, you have reached the end. There's not another port to go to, and hence it describes something that is final. So now the Holy Spirit through Jude is looking into the future and says, when time has sailed to its last port and there's no more time left for the journey. But when you look at it in Jude verse 18, it says mockers will arise in the last time. 
The word time is the Greek word chronos. It describes a specific season. So he's really describing the end time season. And he says they will walk after their own godly lusts. The word walk, a form of the Greek word pereomai, which depicts one who is in transition from one place to another place. Now he's in a really bad place. He's a mocker. He's a scoffer. He's a false teacher, but he didn't start there. He started somewhere else and transitioned into that place. Wow, that is just an amazing verse. And the RIV of Jude, verse 18, is like this. How that they were constantly saying that in the very end of days, when time has sailed to its last port and no more time remains for the journey, in that season, there will be mockers, scoffers, and false teachers who will ridicule and make fun of those who believe it is the last time. I'm talking about individuals who have left the path they once walked on and have now gone in a new direction. Contrary to the life they once lived, they're now bent on following after their own irreverent cravings and desires that are disapproved of and unsanctioned by God. That is a very good interpretation of Jude verse 18, but it reminds me of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, which we covered in the last program. And if you would remember, Jude has received a copy of 2 Peter. And when he read 2 Peter chapter 2 and chapter 3, he was so moved by what he read that he decided that he would write an epistle on the same subject. And when you compare the book of Jude and the epistle of 2 Peter, you will see there are great similarities between these two books. But when you come to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, Peter says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. The word last, again, is the Greek word eschatos, pointing to the very, very end of the age. But here it says last days. The Greek word says tun himiron. It means at the very end of days, when there are no more days, you've come to the end of time, scoffers will arise walking after their own lust. Then he describes their scoffing in verse 4 and say, the Greek actually says, alleging, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So they're laughing at those who believe that it is the end of the age. But when you come back to Jude, verse 19, Jude continues to describe these mockers in the very end of the age. And he says, these be they who separate themselves. Then he says, they are sensual, not having the spirit. What in the world does he mean when he says, these be they who separate themselves. Well, the word separate themselves is a translation of two Greek words, the word apo and the word haridzo. The word apo means away from, and here it carries the idea of a separation. The word apo, to be away from, and it carries the idea of a separation. The word haridzo means to mark off, to set boundaries around, to disjoin, to divide, or to set limits, but when you compound the two words together, apo and haridzo, they form one single word, which means to divide, to draw away from others, and it pictures a separation. So now these individuals who think they are elite and better than everybody else, mocking everyone else, begins to draw away from others and separate, and he goes on to say that they are sensual. They may claim to be spiritual, but Jude says very clearly, they're not spiritual, they are sensual, which is the Greek word sukikos, which means they are soulish or they do things from the soulish realm, not having the spirit. And the RIV of Jude, verse 19, is like this. These people draw away from others as if they are spiritually elite and put themselves in a different category from everyone else, and they cause divisions. These are obviously not spiritual people, but function in a soulish realm, and they absolutely do not possess the Spirit. Wow. These words are very strong, and they remind me of James chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, where James also uses this word sensual, the Greek word sukika. So let's look at it. Let's go to James chapter 3 and verse 14, where James is talking about people with 
wrong revelation and bad attitudes, and notice how he describes them. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. But notice in James 3.14, he says, if you have, the word have is the Greek word echo. It means to have, hold, or to possess. If you have, hold, or possess within you bitter envy and strife. The word bitter is the Greek word pikria, which describes an inner poison that causes one to eventually to become unkind, sour, sharp, sarcastic, scornful, cynical, mocking, contemptuous, and wounding. The word envy is a form of the Greek word zealous. Ay, ay, ay. The word zealous depicts a self-consumed person who's driven to see his agenda adopted at the expense of everybody else. It is one who is competitive, one who is upset because someone else has achieved more or gained more than him, one who is jealous, envious, resentful, filled with ill will because someone else got what he wanted. And the word strife is the word eretheia. Ah, the word eretheia is the old Greek word to describe a political party. And often in the New Testament, in newer translations, it is translated as party spirit because of its connection to political systems and political parties. It pictures individuals or groups who push their agenda and ideas fiercely fighting to see their platform accepted. It pictures self-seeking ambition that is more concerned about itself and the fulfillment of its own desires, wants, and pleasures than it is in meeting the needs of others. It pictures one so bent on getting what he wants that he's willing to do anything, say anything, or sacrifice any standard rule or relationship to achieve his goal. It is a selfish, self-focused attitude that is engrossed with its own desires and ambitions, one that is jockeying for some kind of position. All of that is in this word strife, the Greek word eretheia. But then we come to James chapter 3, verse 15, where James emphatically says, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual. There you have that word sensual. And then he adds devilish. Let's begin with the word wisdom. The word wisdom here is the Greek word sophia which describes wisdom or insight supernaturally attained. You could translate it, this so-called wisdom, you're claiming to have divine revelation, but what you're claiming to possess does not descend from above. The word descendeth, it means it does not descend or come down from above as opposed to what comes from below. It doesn't come from a heavenly source. He says it is earthly. The word earthly the Greek word epi, geos. Epi means upon. The word geos is from geos, which is the word for the earth. Epi, geos. It's right from the face of the earth. It is of the earthly dimension. He, then he uses this word sensual, which is the same word we just saw in Jude, the word sukikas. It means soulish or belonging to the soulish realm. They may project themselves as being spiritual, but in fact, they're not moving in a spiritual dimension. They're moving in a soulish dimension. And then James, in verse 15, adds the word devilish, which in Greek means this is demonic. It is demon-like, or they are obviously influenced by demons. Now that's a lot that we just covered. But the RIV of James 3.14 would be like this. If you have an attitude that makes you sarcastic, cynical, mocking, contemptuous, and wounding of others, if you're driven to see your view or agenda adopted at the expense of others, or if you're irritated, infuriated, irate, annoyed, provoked, fuming or incensed with others, and so filled with strife inside your heart that you're blinded to the desires or needs of others, if you're jockeying for an advantage, even if it's to the disadvantage of others, then stop these actions and attitudes that are being carried out at the expense of others and quit projecting yourself as doing it all with right motives because it isn't true. 
then the RIV of James 3.15 would be like this. This emphatically is not wisdom that comes down from heaven, but on the contrary, it emphatically is from a low-level earthly realm. It is pure soulish activity, and anyone who's thinking and behaving like this is clearly under the influence of demonic activity. Now that is amazing, but let's go back to the RIV of Jude verse 19. And Jude verse 19 in the RIV says, These people draw away from others as if they're spiritually elite and put themselves in a different category from everyone else and they cause divisions. These obviously are not spiritual people but function in a soulish realm and they absolutely do not possess the Spirit. Now that is amazing. But... If you read all of Jude, verses 1 to 19, Jude says a lot about these kinds of people. And let's review a few of the things he said as they are translated in the RIV. For example, he calls them a certain category of individuals who have clandestinely, almost like a stealth operation, craftily wormed their way right into the middle of our ranks. Or, he says, they're people who were once reverent and God-fearing, but now they've obviously lost their fear of God. Then he adds, these are individuals who go about altering, changing, and modifying the grace of our God into a teaching that says everything is okay and that leads to sinful living that is especially marked by immoral and indecent sexual activities along with other base behaviors. Or, he adds, they knowingly are denying and walking away from the authoritative covering of the Lord. Then he adds, these dreamers have shockingly convinced themselves that what they do and condone is all right. Then he adds, they go about defiling the flesh and they show total disregard to those with authority. Then adding, out of a complete disdain for spiritual authority, they derogatorily speak debasing, nasty, shameful, ugly words to those who are in authority with the purpose to belittle and to put them down. Then he adds, the kind of people I'm talking to you about right now speak atrociously and inappropriately even about things they absolutely do not comprehend or even have a clue about. Then Jude adds, they know and operate from a natural low-level instinct and are a lot like animals that lack intelligence. Then he adds, their standing in life is degenerate, depraved, and totally messed up. Then adding again, they have abandoned what they once held to be true to follow after the same path of Cain. Then he says, for the sake of financial gain, they've given themselves fully to error and have lost their bearings and are now completely morally Adrift. Then Jude adds, their mutinous, rebellious, subversive attitudes and speech is a lot like those that marked Korah then. These people are there right in your midst, sumptuously feasting at your love feast with no fear. And then he describes them like this, people that are like dangerous reefs in the sea with potential to cause spiritual shipwreck in people's lives. Then he adds, and there they are among you, self-focused, tending to their own needs and taking care of themselves. And then he adds this very visual description. They're like clouds that fill the sky that look like they carry water, but contrary to the image they give to others about themselves, they're spiritually dry as a desert and completely void of spiritual water. Then Jude adds, they're like turbulent winds that bring a lot of destruction into people's lives. They have absolutely no fruit to show for themselves. Then he adds, these people spiritually are entirely decayed, withered like a plant that's been torn from its roots from the soil. Then he says, the people I'm describing are uncontrollable and unpredictable like raging waves that are constantly rising, falling, always on the move. And just as waves in the sea churn up a lot of foam and drag up junk from the bottom of the sea, these folks stir up trouble, spit up spiritual vomit, spiritually froth back and forth and produce a mess out of their own disgrace, dishonor and indignity. Then he says, like stars that have lost their orbit, they have veered off track. They have moved out of their God-appointed orbit and now roam and wander about. It is amazing everything that Jude says about these individuals that have become apostate and who have become mockers. But then you come to Jude verse 20, and this is where we're going to begin 
in the next program. And in Jude verse 20, he says, But ye beloved, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost. He gives us direction so that we never become numbered among these mockers. And then he adds, verse 21, Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Jude, verse 22, of some have compassion, making a difference. Jude, verse 23, of others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Jude 24, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Verse 25, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. We're going to cover those verses next week. But from Jude, verse 1 to verse 19, he has really focused on the fact that at the end of the age, much of the church will become apostate, ministers will become apostate, believers will become apostate, and there will be mockers who will manifest at the very, very end of the age. And my friends, we do not want to be numbered among the mockers. We want to stay with the Word of God and hold on to the truth that Jesus really is coming again. Stay tuned. My announcer is going to tell you how you can order today's materials, and then I'll be back, and I want to pray for you. The Bible says one of the signs we've come to the end of the age is there will be mockers who mock and make fun of the rest of us who believe Jesus is coming soon for His church. In fact, the Holy Spirit said these mockers will appear right before the closure of the church age. What exactly does the Bible tell us about this, and why is it taking so long for Jesus to return? In the series, Mockers in the Last Days, Rick Renner opens the scriptures to show us what the apostles prophesied over and over about events in the last days. In this five-part series, Rick covers Enoch's prophecy about the last days, murmurers and complainers in the last days, mockers in the last days, and the good news that Jesus is coming soon. This five-part series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $10. We are also offering you Rick's book, Last Day's Survival Guide. It's a must read for you to know what the Bible tells us about the end of the age and how to navigate the times we are living in right now. The world around us is being shaken and seems to be falling apart, but your foundation can be so strong and secure that you will be unshaken and can live victoriously through this end time season. Last Day's Survival Guide can be yours for only $25. Don't miss this special offer, the powerful series, Mockers in the Last Days, and the book, Last Days Survival Guide. Call the number on your screen now, or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey, this is Rick Renner. This is where I sit every morning, where I meet with the Lord, and I pray for our TV family, our partners, people that I love all over the world. And this is where I prepare my TV programs. I sit down with my Greek study helps. And by the way, I don't just use Greek study helps. I read New Testament Greek. That's what I studied in the university. It really is my specialization. But before I give them to you, first I check them. I make sure I've got it right. I study all these programs, really put it all together. And I have to tell you that preparing the program is the biggest part. Filming the program is the easy part. It takes hours and hours and hours to make sure I put everything together correctly for you. And then from here, it goes to the TV suite where I sit down with my producer, and then he and I go over all the introductions that I have filmed. Where the word of the king is, there, let God's word release its power in your life today. And I'll see you in the next program. Wow, done with another program. It's so good to do these programs for the people who watch us all over the world. This is our studio. This really is where I live my life. And in this room, we prepare programs that ultimately go to multiple languages all over the face of the earth. They're primarily Russian and English. Wow, what a blessing. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, verse 21, that the lips of the righteous feed many. It's my prayer that our teaching is feeding and nourishing many people. But when we're finished with my part, then the programs go into the edit suite, and that's what takes place in this room. 
And in this room, you can see there's people doing all kinds of things. They take the Greek words that I prepare. By the way, it takes a long time to prepare all those Greek words. But then they have to put them on the screen. They have to adjust the sound, adjust the color. They edit the whole program together with the music, the advertisements, the prayer, everything. And we create a teaching program for you. And our goal is to bring teaching that you can trust. That's our goal. That's my prayer. And I want to say thank you to you for helping all of us do it. It's not just me and Denise. There's a whole team here together. We're all committed to bringing good teaching to people. And your part's very important. So thank you for being a partner. Thank you for praying for us. And thank you for giving. Thank you so much for being with me today. I really want you to order these materials, the series, which is called Mockers in the Last Days. It's five parts and it comes in multiple formats and it comes with a study guide. And my friend, the study guide is wonderful. It's loaded with all the Greek words, the points, everything in the series is in the study guide so that you can read it while you're seeing it or while you're hearing it. And today is the last day this week that we're offering this for you. And today is also the last day which we're offering my book, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide, The Forward, by my friend Perry Stone. And the subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. My friends, God is not in the business of scaring us, but he is in the business of preparing us. And that's why I wrote this book, to prepare you so you can thrive even in perilous times. Order this book today, and you ought to order too, because I promise you're going to want to share this book with someone else. And please remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, a partner is anyone who financially regularly gives to this ministry, to help us take this teaching to people all over the world. And the moment you become a member of our partner family, we're going to wrap our arms around you and send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone, which is dedicated to our partners. And we're going to send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness that is so powerful. We always give these two books to anyone who becomes a part of our partner family. But I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you have not called us to be numbered with the mockers and the scoffers of the last days. You say you're coming, and we believe that you're coming. We hold on to that promise, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Hey, remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. Let God's word work in your life today, and I'll see you in the next program. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.